<laughs> this is the God's honest truth, okay? Truth, tea, this is what happened. I woke up this morning and I realized it was Monday and I was like, oh fuck, nothing to film today. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna film. And then I went on Instagram and I saw that Barnes and Noble was having a sale. They're having a sale to combat Prime Day. It's buy one, get one, 50% off all, all hardcovers. So I texted Kay and I said, do you wanna go to Barnes and Noble? And they said, yes I do. And then we went to Barnes and Noble. <laughs> And I went a little bit overboard. Shout out to Barnes and Noble for providing me with content today. Look, if you say the words bookstore and sale in the same sentence, I'm there. Like, doesn't matter. And the fact that it's hardcovers on sale is just perfect. I don't like buying hardcovers because I think they're too expensive and I prefer paperbacks. But if they're gonna go on sale, then I'm gonna fucking buy them. So that's what happened. Um, I have a couple little clips. I've lost K and also probably about a hundred dollars. Eight books right now. All right, so here's my basket of eight books. K has four and a green tea and oh boy. <laughs> also, I have my Izzy hands earrings on. Izzy Ham's my best friend in the world. Um, but yeah, I have a, a bag of books <laughs> to, to show you today. So I got... I know, I know it's Paradise. Do I still pronounce this like Paradise? Paradise? Very little paragraph breaks. Paradise slash Paradise. By Fernanda Melkor. Um, I just heard a few people talk about this recently and I was like, okay, sure. Um, I heard it's fucked up and crazy. Jack Edwards had this in his most recent vi like video, I think, which is the one where he read translated works. Inside a luxury housing complex, two misfit teenagers sneak around and get drunk. Franco, lonely, overweight, and addicted to porn, obsessively fantasizes about seducing his neighbor, an attractive married woman and mother, while Polo dreams about quitting his awful job as the gated community's gardener and fleeing his overbearing mother in their narco-controlled village. Faced with the impossibility of getting what they think they deserve, Franco and Polo hatch a mindless and macabre scheme. I don't know. Sounds interesting. It's short, too. How many pages is it? It's a hundred and... 12 pages. I don't know. Maybe I'll like it. We'll see. I love shit that's insane and, and fucked. So, um, yeah. Next, I have Sundial by Catriona Ward. Um, this was in the horror section. I, first of all, this cover is just really gorgeous. Um, I saw Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte talk about this book and it sounded interesting. I just really like this cover. Um, and it's about like a mother daughter and the mom is like afraid of her kid and her kid kind of senses that the mom is like feeling weird i think the mom is contemplating killing her daughter like i think that's what this is about and so i was like slay <laughs> i'm just really obsessed with like this beautiful fucking cover and i think it's kind of magical realism it says that her daughter callie collects tiny bones and whispers to imaginary friends and it reminds her mom too much of the family she left behind. Speaking of Olivia Reads a Latte, I also got So Happy For You by Celia Lasky. Everyone super loves weddings. Like weddings are insane rituals, like, like more crazy than they are now. Robin is our main character and her best friend is getting married and her best friend asked her to be a maid of honor, but Robin's like wary of weddings because the weddings are super elaborate and as the wedding weekend approaches a series of ominous occurrences lead robin to second guess her decisions it says it's viciously funny and eerily campy and the main character is queer i'm excited to check this out i have lots of feelings about weddings um i don't want to get married i'd love to have a wedding does that make sense so let's go to this ya book that i got this is the heartbreak bakery by ar capetta i don't remember why this was on my story graph but it was there which means at some point i i heard i wanted to read it sid no pronouns please okay slay sid 
um, has always dealt with big, hard to talk about things. By baking, being dumped is no different, except now Sid is working in the kitchen of the Proud Muffin, a queer bakery and community space in Austin. That's why I picked this up. And everyone who eats Sid's breakup brownies breaks up. Even Vin and Alec, who own the Proud Muffin, and their breakup might take the bakery down with it. No, oh my God. Being dumped is one thing, causing ripples of queer heartbreak is, a, is another. But the Proud Muffin's cute bike delivery person, Harley, he or they, check the pronoun pin on the messenger bag, is the first person to really believe in Sid's magical break baking. Not to mention the first person to see that Sid is an agender cupcake. <laughs> okay, don't love that phrasing, but um, that's very Tumblr. And together, Sid and Harley are going to fix the romantic disasters caused by those brownies one recipe at a time. So a little bit of magical realism. This seems so cute. Oh my God, I'm excited. This is the only YA book I bought. I got Notes on an Execution by Danya Kukovka. I think I said that right. Danya Kukovka. Um, this kind of reminds me of, I, look, I don't know if it's actually about that, just the title it reminds me of. I had to watch this movie for social, sociology class and I missed the class where we watched the beginning of it, but I saw the second half and Susan Sarandon was in it and she played a nun and she was like advising a guy who was on death row. I, I, I'll look up the movie and try and find it. I just know Susan Sarandon was in it because I was like, Janet Weiss? I remember like when this came out, I really wanted it. Also this purple cover. Oh, I really hope the book is purple too. Oh, fuck yeah. I just really like this purple color. All right, let me see what it's actually about. <laughs> Ansel Packer is scheduled to die in 12 hours. He knows what he's, oh. No. No. I hate deckled edges. I fucking hate deckled edges. I didn't even notice this was a thing. Oh, that is so sad for me. Oh well. Ansel Packer is scheduled to die in 12 hours. He knows what he's done and now awaits execution. The same chilling fate he forced on those girls years ago, but Ansel doesn't want to die. He wants to be celebrated and understood. Celebrated. Through a kaleidoscope of women, a mother, a sister, a homicide detective, we learn the story of Ansel's life. We meet his mother, Lavender, a 17-year-old girl pushed to desperation. Hazel, twin sister to Ansel's wife, inseparable since birth, forced to watch helplessly as her sister's re relationship threatens to devour them all. And finally, Safi, the detective hot on his trail, who has devoted herself to bringing bad men to justice but struggles to see her own life clearly. As the clock ticks down, these three women sift through the choices that culminate in tragedy, exploring the rippling fissures that such destruction inevitably leaves in its wake. My mom is gonna eat this up, baby. I wanna read it, but I know my mom is also gonna wanna read it. This purple color on the cover is also just so beautiful. I had to go to Sonic afterward. I didn't even want anything to eat. I'm just obsessed with their lemonade. This is a raspberry lemonade. The Hop by Diana Clark. I believe this is about a sex worker. A page churning feminist novel that tells the story of a poor scrappy girl from rural New Zealand who reluctantly turns into a sex icon, the face of a movement and a mother all at the same time. Been thinking a lot about New Zealand lately because I just saw um, Reese Darby do comedy in Providence. And I think about his accent a lot. I don't know why. Sometimes I'm like, I'm normal about Reese Darby. And then sometimes I'm like, you know? <laughs> Kate Burns grows up wanting attention from her mother, but Ma only wants money, so Kate learns how to get both. She and her child friend Lacey run kissing lessons for cash in the janitor's closet, and just like that, they find themselves in the sex work industry. From there, they go on to work at the Purple Panther, a strip club in Auckland. After Ma dies of cancer, Kate discovers that the men she was always inviting to their home were, in fact, clients. Ma was no stranger to sex work either. Following in Ma's footsteps, Kate heads to Nevada where she picks up a job at America's most, most prestigious brothel, The Hop. Is this real? Because I feel like I might have watched a documentary on that brothel before. Is that a, a real place? Maybe I should Google that. The other bunnies include a goth, a housewife, a cheerleader, and a rebel. Not to mention Betty, a trans beauty queen, Mia, a Japanese cosplayer, and Rain, a dominatrix. The girls at the hop are more fantasy than fact, and Kate is a natural, stepping into the role of Lady Lane. She quickly rises through the ranks to become the most in-demand bunny, 
and favorite of the owner, Daddy. But when 10 street hookers are killed in a nearby city, just bodies with no names, Lady joins her sister bunnies in mourning and begins to see things in a new light. This sounds really good. I'm very excited. This also feels like something my mom will be super into. Also, this really beautiful hot pink spine. Yes. Slay. In a similar vein, I have Acts of Service by Lillian Fishman. I don't <laughs> remember being like, oh, I want to read that. I just remember seeing the cover and being like, yep, and then buying it. Um, Eve has an adoring girlfriend. Queer people for the win, baby. Eve has an adoring girlfriend, an impulsive streak, and a secret fear that she's wasting her brief youth with just one person. So one evening she posts some news online. This is how she meets Olivia and through Olivia, the charismatic Nathan. Despite Eve's better instincts, the three soon begin a relationship. One that disturbs Eve. Eve, Eve. Can't stop saying Eve. One that disturbs Eve. Dis one that disturbs Eve as much as it enthralls her. As each act of their affair unfolds across a cold and glittery New York, New York. Eve is forced to confront the questions that most consume her. What do we bring to sex? What does it reveal of ourselves and one another? And how do we reconcile what we want with what we think we should want? Oh, this is like Sally Rooney style. No quotes. No quotation marks. We're gonna be audio booking that. <laughs> also, this cover is just so enticing. Like this one pink square, like, ugh. Big sleigh. And then the last book I got is Mercy Street by Jennifer Haig. Um, oh, the doctor's calling me. Sorry guys, I don't know if the angle changed or anything, but I'm trying to get an appointment with the doctor for my ankles. Had to take that phone call. But what I was saying, Mercy Street, Jennifer Haig. This also has deckled edges. Oh my God, fuck you eyes with these deckled edges. I hate them. For almost a decade, Claudia Birch has counseled patients at Mercy Street, an embattled clinic in the heart of the city. The work is consuming the unending dramas of women in crisis. For its patients, Mercy Street offers more than health care. For many, it is a second chance. But outside the clinic, the reality is different. Anonymous threats are frequent. A small, determined group of anti-abortion demonstrators appears each morning at its door. As the protests intensify, fear creeps into Claudia's days, a humming anxiety she manages with frequent visits to Timmy, an affordable, no, not affordable, oh my god, <laughs> an affable pot dealer in the midst of his own existential crisis. At Timmy, she encounters a random assortment of customers, including Anthony, a lost soul who spends most of his life online chatting with the mysterious Excelsior 11, the screen name of Victor Pr Prine, an anti-abortion crusader who has his, has set his sights on Mercy Street and is ready to risk it all for his beliefs. Oh, fucking Christ. I've seen this on TikTok, um, especially after um, in May when the Roe v. Wade overturning got leaked and then more after it was officially overturned. I've seen a lot of recommended reading lists um, in terms of abortion and this is one that I've been looking at. I'm also looking at, I can't remember like the exact phrasing of the title but I'll put a picture of it. I think it's called You're the Only One I've Told or something like that, um, which is nonfiction that I've been looking for. I'm going to try and find it. Um, my mom is taking me book shopping for my birthday in a couple weeks, so I'm going to try and find it then. But I haven't been able to find it at Barnes & Noble. I bought eight books because I don't have any self-control. Here are the books I bought. I have some fun videos planned coming up um, because I'm going to a bunch of indie bookstores for my birthday. I think I'm going to vlog that. I just love showing off the indies in my area. I think it's so fun. These were my purchases from today that I'm excited about. I hope you guys get to take advantage of this. I don't know how long it's going on. Like normally they have these sales and they're like, they just post every day and be like, we're still having this sale until they're not having a sale anymore. So um, I hope you guys get a chance to look, look at these. If there's a barns in your area. Oh. Bye guys. I love you. See you soon.